Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me video. I'm going to be doing this makeup look and I'm going to be doing my hair in today's video. It's been a long time. It's been a while since I've done my hair in a video. It's been a minute since I've done my hair in a video, but I finally figured out how to style this hair with some extensions that I feel really good about. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I do that. If you have damaged hair or like a chemical cut, you know, or you bleached your hair too much and you have a lot of breakage like I do, hopefully the hair part will help you out with some tips on how to cover it up and how to style it. This is a makeup look that I wore to an event not too long ago where I got to meet Bella Hadid. She is beautiful, amazing, incredible. She's just a really sweet down to earth person. And I wanted to do the makeup that I wore to that event because I really liked the way it looked. It was out on a rooftop and there was a lot of sun, like it was right when the sun was going down and you could really see how sparkly the eyeshadow was. Uh, so I'll show you guys a little snap video that I took also, but the eyeshadow is just a really pretty look if you're gonna be out in daylight or even if you're gonna be out in low light. It looks really, really cool. I'm gonna start with an eye mask and these are the Bright Eyes Eye Mask to Deep Puff and brighten these lime green looking things looking things i think they're loaded with caffeine so that's what helps to deep puff highly caffeinated eye mask brightens and deep puffs and once you take off the eye patches you just want to pat in any of the excess ingredients and let it dry get all that hydration i'm going to try everything in my power to not say like a lot today that is my goal because the last video i edited i said like so many times that I, I was trying to cut them out and then I just ended up giving up because it was too hard. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and prime my skin using my Makeup Forever Hydrating Primer, the Step 1 Hydrating Primer. Pat it in. I washed my hair today and I just finished blow drying it. I do it on a really light or low heat. Oh, shit. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing my hair at the end uh, once I finish my makeup. But to kind of prep just this front part of my hair, I like to use the Way Wave Spray. This is a product that I use for a lot of different things, not really for using wave, but it's a good light hold product. So I just like to put a, sp a couple sprays here. My hair will just kind of dry. You know, I call this the curing process. So I'm just gonna leave it right there in my hair. And this, you know, obviously we're gonna do the hair at the end. So I'm just gonna clip it up for now. Oh my God, there's a fucking fly in here. Like a loud one. Where's my fly swatter? Fuck, this fly is huge. I need to get my fly swatter. There's a fly in here and I'm gonna get it. You like my new fly swatters? I haven't used it yet, that's why I just put it on my face in case you're wondering. <laughs> Got him! Got him! It's nothing! Oh, I feel bad now. We're gonna do the eyeshadow first and I'm gonna apply some of my IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eyes to my under eyes. Oh boy. This is with an Urban Decay concealer brush. And as you can see right here, the more weight that I lose, that's where it comes out first. The old under eyes. This stuff covers so well though, if you have like problem areas. This is shade neutral medium. And then I'm gonna take the Morphe E8 brush, spritz it with a little fix plus. By the way, the spritzer on here works now. I don't know what happened. It just decided to work all of a sudden. And just kind of dab it. Such a big difference, isn't it? Don't say anything. Okay, next is to prime the eyes, and I'm using the Benefit Air Patrol primer, and I'm gonna bring it out pretty far, like out here. And you just buff it out with your finger. Is it inappropriate that I'm wearing my robe? I feel like this is how I actually get ready, you know? All right, and now we're gonna start on the eyeshadow, and I used a couple different palettes for this look. The main one was the Tarte, this is the original Tarte Lip Palette, because I wanted to go with something a little bit more taupey undertoned. So I used some grays and I also used some different taupe shadows. And then I'm also gonna be dipping into some of the Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes. And you'll see the color that I use, the ones that have a lot of reflex in it, and also this gray color here. But to set the eye, I'm gonna take Super Mom, the really light shadow in this palette, and just pack it all over the lid. This is a CC E02 brush. And for this look, it's like a really winged out kind of cat eye effect. So I'm gonna be using tape for it because it, it helps a lot for me anyway when I use tape to give me a little bit of a guide. And the only tape that I have is masking tape, unfortunately. Yellow masking tape. So that's what we're gonna be using today. But I do actually like using masking tape because it's not as sticky as scotch tape. So you can tap it a couple times on your hands. It's a little bit less sticky. For the actual placement of it on my eye, what I like to do is put it lower so that way the wing of the eyeshadow actually connects with when I smoke out my lower lash line. So instead of putting it up here, right where the end of my eye is, I'm gonna drop it down a little bit more like right here 
So that way there's space for the wing and it doesn't interfere with that little fold right there. Right there. So that's the guide for the winged eyeliner and the winged eyeshadow actually. The other side's actually a lot easier for me to do like a wing on, but the right side is like, pff, girl. And then you just wanna make sure like when you look in the mirror that they're both kind of even, it's not like going lit like crazy up or down. This one maybe goes a little bit lower. All right, now I'm gonna start with Wanderer from the Tartlet palette. This, this color, it's kind of like a neutral, taupey, really, really light neutral taupe shade. And I'm gonna use my Zoeva 228 brush and kind of buff it from the very end of the wing all the way up until like halfway into the eye. Next, I'm gonna take Power Player, which is more of a, like an actual gray undertone shadow and a 230 brush and blend that on top of the Wanderer color. This will help to deepen it up a little bit and add a little bit more of the grayish tones. All right, now I'm gonna take the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Rock Chick palette. Got a bunch of grays, silvers, shimmery colors in here. And I'm gonna use a flatter brush. This is a CC E07 with this dark gray color. And I'm gonna use it to kind of wing out the eyeshadow instead of using an actual eyeliner. And I'm just using the tape as a guide for what the wing is gonna be. Just so it kind of creates a little half wing. Since I don't have a ton of like lid space when my eyes open, I'm not gonna do the dark smoky on the actual first half of the lash line. I'm only gonna do it on the outer half. And if you wanna make the winged out part a little bit more dramatic, you can add some black eyeshadow. I'm gonna go in with Fashionista and that same brush and just lightly brush it onto the lower half of the wing. And we get a little bit more smoky. If only I could leave my eyes, they would just stay like this, you know? Now I'm gonna kind of blend all these colors together using Force of Nature in the palette, using that same Zoeva brush that I used in the beginning. And kind of buff it right here. And now to add some of the sparkle on the lid, I'm gonna come back into the Charlotte Tilbury, the Rock Chick palette. This shadow right here, it looks like it's kind of dark, but it's really just like a reflex formula. So you can see right there, even when I put it on my lid, it's not gonna look quite this dark. But I'm just gonna pat it all over the lid and it's gonna add like a really cool shine. Just using my finger and I'm gonna add it kind of like on top of a shadow that I just blended in. And then to add a little bit more dimension, I'm gonna come in with the Legendary Muse palette from Charlotte Tilbury. I've used this one before, this shadow by itself, but I'm actually gonna layer it on top of the silver this time. This one's more of like kind of a goldy reflex formula. All right, next is just to add a little bit of black eyeliner to the lid. This eyeshadow looks really cool if you're out in direct sunlight. It's so sparkly and amazing, I promise you. Time for the unveiling. It's time for mascara, and then we can go ahead and move on to the rest of the face. This is the Too Faced Waterproof Better Than Sex Mascara. For lashes, I'm gonna use the Coco Lashes Demi G. They are spiky, fanned out lashes. These ones. And this is the one that I trimmed, so that way you guys can see like how much I trimmed off. It's a lot, right? Let me show you the difference of, this is a trimmed one. Obviously not glued on yet, but there's the trimmed and then here is the untrimmed. But there's a the difference between the two. This one, it's just like all lash. And I feel like it makes my eye a little bit smaller. That's why I like to do them a little bit more winged out on the outside edge and why I trim so much off my lashes. My inner corner can't support that much lash. This is the Tarte Lash Glue, the lash I've been using as of lately. Love it, I need to get the clear one though. If you mess up and get some of the black lash glue on your lid, it fucks with my chi. Now it's time for some foundation and I'm gonna be trying out the Dior Skin Forever foundation. So it has SPF 35 in it. I was sent this a while ago, but I haven't tried it yet. This is gonna be my first time trying it and this is shade number 30 which is medium beige with a neutral undertone. And I'm gonna apply it with a beauty blender. I feel like it's a little bit more tan than my Pro Glow one, or maybe it's just more coverage. It looks good. Very summery. Summery, John said it's summery. What's the price point? John's asking all this information, $50. That's expensive. How much is the Pro Glow? Pro Glow is like, it's usually more expensive at drugstores. I think it's like $12. I really like the finish of it so far. It's got nice coverage. It's hard to cover this right here though. That's gonna be like a shape tape situation. This is one coat all over my face of the foundation. I, I like this color, but I feel like it does have a little kiss of like red, not pink. Cause if it was pink, I would take it off immediately. But if you look, how does that look? Good. It looks good. You see it's just a little bit more red. It looks like Almost like I was out in the sun. Yeah, the sun. 
This has got a little sunshine. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more coverage right here. My under eyes look a little crazy right now. So let's go ahead and get to highlighting. I am gonna be using my Tarte Shape Tape shade Light Medium. Can you zoom in? I feel like this foundation looks really good. I feel like it looks luminous. It covers really, really well. I just feel like it looks fucking amazing right now. Whoa. Now we're gonna set the under eyes. I'm gonna use my Kat Von D. This is the Petal Lock It Brightening Powder. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my RCMA No Color Powder. I'm also gonna try out the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer, their little highlighter. I've also had this for a long time and I haven't used it yet. Oh, I did. I just got a fan brush from Ofra that I'm excited to try. It looks really, really good. This The one I always use is from Smashbox, but I got one from Ofra that looks very promising. The blush I wanted to use today is more of like a bronzy pink. This is one of the baked blushes from Laura Geller, and the color is Sunswept. And you only have to use like a little, little bit of this blush. It's super pigmented. All right, let me do a little bit of the highlight on the nose and the cupid's bow. All right, now I'm gonna do my little contour in the inner corner right here for the nose. And I'm using just the NYX Highlight Contour Palette. And this is a NYX eyeshadow brush, number 27. Kind of buff it into the eyeshadow, right underneath the brow. For the lower lash line, I'm gonna be using mainly the Luxie 231, which is one of my favorite brushes. And I'm gonna start with Wanderer, the same shade that I used on the top lash line. And what I'm gonna do on the lower lash line is I'm kind of gonna stop like halfway or three quarters of the way with this color. Here it is with the first shade, and now I'm gonna come in with Power Player, this one, the more gray-toned one, and do the same thing, but I'm gonna bring it in a little bit less, so halfway across the lash line. And I feel like when I do this, it makes my eyes just look a little bit more sultry, which, you know, is always the goal. Always want sultry. And then lastly, oh, I'm using my Morphe E36, my little detailer brush, and I'm coming back in with the Charlotte Tilbury, the dark gray shadow. And this one, I'm gonna focus really on like the outer quarter of the eye and in this little crease. Ever since I did that one face chart tutorial, I really like to like look like this with my eyeshadow, very like squinty, which is kind of just filling in this little line right here. It's basically like the eyeball line. But I feel like it kind of makes it look a little bit more like that you know, a little bit sultry instead of bringing it all the way in onto the lower lash line. And then using the Legendary Muse palette from Charlotte Tilbury, the lighter gold reflects color, I'm going to take a pencil brush and I'm gonna pack it on the inner corner of the eye, just kind of pressing it into the skin. And then it's really gonna pop when it hits the light. For the lower lashes, I'm gonna use the Maybelline Big Shot. This is the waterproof mascara. I'm not putting anything in my waterline either, just that way the top lid stands out a little bit more. I feel like when you leave the waterline naked, it kind of makes it look a little bit more lashy. Now I'm just gonna comb through them, unclump them a little bit. In lip color today, we're gonna do something like a little bit more like a natural pink kind of color. So I'm gonna line my lips and I'm gonna fill in my lips kind of with the Makeup Forever lip pencil. This is shade number 10. This color is so pretty. I feel like it's just like a shade more pink than my lips. I'm gonna top it with the Dior lipstick. This is Rouge Dior number 263. It's like a natural summery pink, you know? And lastly for the makeup, I'm gonna finish it off with the e.l.f. Beauty Shield, the Daily Defense Makeup Mist. This is just a spray that I've really been liking lately. I gotta get it really far away though. We're gonna be moving on to the hair now. Can you believe it? I am styling my hair in a video. It's been a minute. These extensions are from the hair shop. The color is 479. It blends in really well with my hair. My ha hair color up top is a little bit darker. <laughs> Those layers are darker, but the longer layers have a lot more. This is like all the when I had blonde hair, so they're a lot lighter. They blend actually perfectly with that. So this really just gives me a little bit more highlight. I got them cut and texturized to go with my haircut now. My hair is clean, freshly blow dried. So let's start putting these extensions in. So what I like to do when I put in extensions is put them in, like especially for the front pieces, I put them in a little bit higher. So that way it just covers up basically all of these layers. I just want to cover them up out of sight, out of mind, especially on this side when I part my hair, you can see a lot more, a lot more of the shorter pieces. On the back, I'm gonna do a four clip weft in the center of my head and then a three clip weft on top of that. First one I'm gonna do before I clip in extensions is straighten out with a hair straightener on low heat, the top half of my hair, the shorter layers, so that way they blend in easier 
with the longer layers. You wanna straighten it, not curl it. You don't wanna curl any of the shorter pieces because they definitely have a flip. They have a flip right now on their own. Now that I have all the top layers straightened out, you can tell you can see a lot less of, I mean, you can still see the breakage, but you don't see as much of it. It's not quite as obvious as it was before. And now we're gonna start clipping in the extensions, starting with the four clip on the bottom. I'm gonna spray a little bit of texturizing spray at the root of the hair and lightly tease it using this comb. That way it has something to click onto. Next is the three clipper, and this helps to cover up some of the shorter pieces in the back, even though it doesn't cover up all of them. And next, I'm gonna start working on the sides, and I'm gonna clip a two-piece weft on each side. This will help to fill the front, this front area of my hair. So for this two-piece, I'm gonna clip it kind of at a diagonal, so it's gonna go from like the top closer to the hairline and go back almost at the top of my hairline. And even though you can't really see the extension, it's, it's very, very close to my hairline. So because this color is a little bit lighter, what I like to do is spray the root of the extension and I'm gonna use the Orbe, this is the Airbrush Root Touch Up Spray in dark brown. This will just help to blend it a little bit more and if there's like a little wind, not everybody will know my secrets. All right, now this side's the fun side because I have it side parted. There's a lot more shorter pieces on this side, but I'm gonna do the same thing. Clip in the two piece weft going at a diagonal, not a steep diagonal, I'm not talking like a 45 degree angle, just a little, a uh, slant. This is just with the two piece in and as you can tell you can still see a lot of the little layers And that's why I'm gonna come back in with these two smaller pieces. These are just one clip wefts It used to be a two clip one that my hair stylist cut in half so that way I could have two little mini ones And I'm just gonna clip these in really close up to the root by the hair part So that way it kind of lifts gives a little bit more volume right here and we'll cover up some of the shorter pieces Here's what it looks like once I finish clipping everything in. The extensions that I have in right now did still have a little bit of a curl in it from when I curled them a few days ago, but my other hair does not. So I'm gonna show you guys just how I curl the extensions. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a refresh, and I think over here I'm gonna give this a little bit of a straightening refresh. I know it's not perfect, but it works for me, and it makes me feel good about wearing my hair down out in public, so for what I got going on, I think it works pretty good. And the curling iron that I'm using is a Conair curling iron. I've used this in videos before. This is a one and a quarter inch barrel, and I bought a new curling iron a while ago off Amazon, and I ended up, I accidentally threw it away in one of my purges that I did when I was cleaning out my whole makeup beauty room. I threw it away and I was so mad, but this is the one I'm back to using now because I don't have the other one. So anyway, what I do when I use this curling iron is I'm going to take a piece of hair, so like right here, and most of these longer pieces, this is just straight up extension hair, but you can use this technique for pretty much anything. Now you see the shorter pieces, I try to not curl any of those, even though sometimes they will sneak in every once in a while, but it's okay. So you take a chunk of hair and you're going to put the barrel in the middle, wrap it around once, and then you just kind of slide it up and down the section of hair. Like that, and then you let it go, and then kind of separate it like that. Kind of piece it out. So same thing, you could also change direction. It makes it look a little bit messier if you do that. So this way, I'm gonna put it in the middle, push it over, and then just slide it up and down the barrel. Let it go, and then boom. Take a chunk of hair, put the barrel right in the middle, wrap it around once, and then push it up and down the chunk of hair. Release it, and, and I like to leave like two inches at the bottom of each one if I can of hair that I left straight, but it starts to just build up some volume. And this is my actual hair down here. I'm gonna do the bend up a little bit higher. Here we go. I was like, what is that? This is one of the short guys that accidentally got curled. 
So what I do is I just really lightly run a straightener over it. There we go. Those top layers need to stay straight, so that way they stay hidden. When I have my hair side parted, I like to keep this tucked behind my ear. It also helps to hide these front pieces right here. So I can still curl it the same way, but I'm not gonna be curling any of these. Pull these away. And since this hair is gonna be tucked behind my ear, I'm gonna put the wave a little bit lower. And now we're all curled up. Let's put this little guy, god damn, why do I keep doing that? Get everybody back in their places. And this is getting tucked. There we go. And the finishing product that I like to use, I love this stuff, this is like my absolute favorite right now, the r Co Dry Shampoo Paste. It's like a gritty, sandy textured paste. I just take a little bit out, like about that much on my finger now. You just put it in your hand so it looks like that. And then you massage it and it turns kind of like into a, almost like a pomade. And you just start to piece it into and rub it into the actual bends of the hair. And this will add a soft matte finish hold. And a little bit of texture. Texture. Look at that, you see how it just adds some volume? You just kinda, I don't know what that word is, but I'm just like almost scrunching it into the hair. All right, folks, that is it. We are ready to go. Hair done, makeup done. Nails done. Nails done. That wraps up today's Get Ready With Me. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed styling my mullet with me. There's gonna be many more times in the future. Uh, let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I'm for it. No, I'm not gonna say it. Do it. I'm not gonna say it. It's good. The fringe? You can't, you can't buy a fringe like this. I'm not gonna say it. I'm sweating right now. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Let's do this, shall we? Somebody needs to get their roots done, huh?